In this next section, we are going to talk about consumers and producers surplus. This is one of the applications of area um, for integration. Okay. Um, consumers and producers surplus has a lot to do with supply and demand. Basically, if I'm looking at a supply and demand equation, supply curve and a demand curve, <clears throat> we already know a little bit about these curves. For example, we know that the point where they meet is called the equilibrium. This is the point at which both supply and demand are equivalent. And if I look at this, this is what we'd consider the equilibrium quantity. And over here, this is what we'd consider the equilibrium price. <clears throat> Now, consumer surplus is basically what we'd consider a total gain to consumers who are willing to pay more than the equilibrium price. Okay. So, if I'm looking at the equilibrium price here, the consumer surplus is the region under our demand curve that's above the equilibrium price. Okay. So, in here, this region is what we would call our consumer surplus. Our producer surplus is the total gain to producers who are willing to supply more, um, let me say that differently, they're willing to supply quantities lower than the equilibrium price. Okay, so basically they're giving a discount to consumers. Okay. And in this case, if we're looking at our supply and demand curve, it's the people who are supplying more than uh, the, what the supply is asking for, but less than the equilibrium price. So we're looking at this region in here. Okay, that's our producer surplus. And again, if we think of these in terms of an area, um, Supply is always an increasing curve, demand is always decreasing, at least for most real world applications. So our supply and demand curves give us our producers and consumers surplus in these relationships. Okay. More importantly, if we're looking at these in terms of area, we can come up with formulas to represent both the consumers and the producer surplus. Okay. So again, if I'm looking at kind of the blue region, our consumer surplus is going to be the integral from our start value, which is zero, to our equilibrium quantity. Okay, so we're going out this way in the x-axis, or in this case the q-axis. And it's our upper curve minus our lower curve. Our upper curve in this case is our demand equation. Right, that black curve there. And our lower curve in this case happens to be our equilibrium price. Notice this is in terms of Q. So we want both of these equations or values to be in terms of Q. Okay. So there would be our formula for the consumer surplus. For the producer surplus, we can do the same thing. So producer surplus Again, if we look at it, it starts at zero and is going out to Q naught. And our upper curve in this case is our equilibrium price. Our lower curve is our supply. Again, both are in terms of Q. Now, in real world applications, we are not always going to have nice supply and demand functions where our supply and demand start at an equilibrium or a quantity of zero. In some cases maybe we have some initial start value. But for all of the problems that we're going to look at, our initial start value is always going to be zero. Okay? And like I said before, for all of the problems that we're going to look at, supply curves are initially going to be increasing, demand curves are eventually going to be decreasing. And so sometimes your problems are not going to label them as supply and demand, but you can keep that in mind to tell the difference between them.
both of these are going to come out in dollar amounts. Okay, so note solutions here should be rounded. To the nearest cent. Okay. All of these are going to have uh, monetary answers, so make sure you round them to the correct decimal places. Again, not all of your equilibriums are going to come out nicely, so when you're looking at Q0 and P0, leave them exact until you get to the end where then you round off. Okay. So let's look at an example. Here we're given that a demand equation for a certain product is given by Q equals 100 times 10 minus 2P. And we're given that the supply equation is Q equaling 50 to P minus 1. We want to find the consumer surplus and the producer surplus. Okay. Now, like most of our problems, it doesn't hurt to graph the equations, but for all of the ones that you're going to be given, again, you can make the assumptions that we've already stated. So you don't have to graph them unless you want to look at what they look like. Okay? The first step in any of these problems is we need to find the equilibrium. So we need to know what Q0 and P0 are. Okay? Because without the equilibrium, I can't set up either of my equations. So I need to start there. Okay? So to find my equilibrium, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set the equations equal to each other and find the value that makes those true. So here I'm going to look at 100, 10 minus 2P, and set that equal to 50. 2p minus 1. Okay. And I'm just going to solve. So here I can divide out by 50, and I get 2 times 10 minus 2p equals 2p minus 1. Multiplying through, okay. I'm going to go ahead and make my p's positive, so I'm going to move the 4p to this side and the 1 to the other side. And then I'm going to go ahead and divide out by 6. Okay. Not a very pretty number, but I can simplify that a little bit. So P will equal 7 halves. Once I have my P, so again this is essentially P naught, that's my equilibrium price, so three and a half dollars. I need to get my equilibrium quantity. And so to get that, I can plug it back into either the supply or the demand equation. Doesn't matter because, again, they should be equivalent at that point. So here I'm going to go ahead and plug it into the first one I have. So 100, 10 minus 2 times my 7 halves. This will give me my Q equation. And so here we can see this is going to be 10 minus 7, which is 3. So 300 is going to be my equilibrium quantity. Okay, So now that I have my equilibrium, I can go ahead and solve for my consumers and producer surplus. It does not matter what you're doing first. In some of your problems, it's only going to ask you to find one or the other. In some equations or some problems, it's going to ask you to find both. So pick which one you want to do first. In this example, we're going to do the equilibrium, uh, sorry, we're going to do the consumer surplus first. So two, we're going to set up RCS formula. Okay. So remember here, our consumer surplus is the integral from zero to Q naught, our demand minus our equilibrium price, this with respect to Q. Okay. <coughs> now again, notice it's with respect to Q, but our demand equation is in terms of P. So here we're going to have to rewrite our Q. Okay. 
So I'm going to divide out by 100 to get 10 minus 2p. Then I'm going to subtract 10. and divide out by a negative 2. Okay, so there's my demand equation in terms of Q. So my consumer surplus is going to look like the integral from 0 to my equilibrium quantity, which was 300. My demand equation I'm going to write that as 5 minus Q over 200 minus my equilibrium price, which was 7 halves. That is what I want to integrate with respect to Q. Okay. And again, for my, my CS equation, I can clean this up some. So CS is going to equal 0 to 300. Same thing, 10 halves minus 7 halves, so 3 halves minus Q over 200 dQ. There's my setup for my consumer surplus. So the next step is now that I have my consumer surplus, I'm going to evaluate the consumer surplus integral. Okay. And this evaluation can take many forms. It depends completely on what your consumer surplus equation looks like. So in our case, again, CS is the integral from 0 to 300 of 3 halves minus Q over 200 dQ. In this case, we're looking at just basic properties. Okay? So my antiderivative of 3 halves is going to be 3 halves Q. And an antiderivative of Q over 200. Well, the 200, 1 over 200 can come out front. So integral of Q is just 1 half Q squared. So it's going to be Q squared over 400. And I'm going to evaluate that from 0 to 300. So again, to evaluate, we're using our fundamental theorem. I'm going to evaluate from the upper minus the lower. At my upper limit, I'm looking at 3 halves of 300 minus 300 squared over 400. At my lower limit, nicely when I plug in 0, everything goes to 0. Okay. From there, I'm going to go ahead and simplify, so this looks like 900 over 2 minus 90,000 over 400. Okay. We can simplify some, so notice some of these zeros will cancel out. I'm going to get a 450 over 2, take away from 900 over 2 which looks like 450 over 2. Or, again, I'm looking for a dollar amount, so I want to simplify this. This is going to be $225. That's my consumer surplus. For my producer surplus, I'm going to do the same thing. Now, a lot of the steps we've already done. So, again, first would be to find our equilibrium. which again we already did. We said that our equilibrium, so Q0, P0, was 300, and then our P0 was 7 halves. Okay, so we've already got our equilibrium. Second, just like with the consumer surplus, we want to set up our producer surplus formula. Okay. So for producer surplus, remember, PS is going to equal the integral from 0 to 300. Oops, 
Sorry, our general formula, 0 to Q0. It was our P0, so our equilibrium price minus our supply in terms of Q. Now again, in this case, our Q equation, uh, sorry, our supply equation was in terms of P. So again, we re need to rewrite supply in terms of Q. So our supply equation for this one was Q equal 50 to P minus 1. So to rewrite that, we're going to divide out by 50, add 1 to both sides, and then divide everything by 2. Okay. Now that we have our Q in terms of, sorry, our P in terms of Q, we can set up our producer surplus. So PS is going to be the integral 0 to 300, so again using our equilibrium quantity, our equilibrium price, minus our supply equation. And just like with our consumer surplus, we probably want to simplify that before we try evaluating. So integral from 0 to 300, we're going to take a 7 halves minus 1 halves, which will give us 6 halves, or 3, minus our Q over 100. producer surplus equation. Again, the last step is to evaluate the PS interval. Okay. So, we'll take our PS equaling the integral from 0 to 300. 3 minus Q over 100 dQ and we'll find the antiderivative. Okay. Again, nicely basic properties here. So antiderivative of 3 is just going to be 3q. The 100, again, we can pull out front as 1 over 100. So integral of q is going to be q squared over 2. With that, 100 becomes 200. And we're going to evaluate this from 0 to 300. Okay. Again, using the fundamental theorem, we'll evaluate upper minus lower. So at our upper, we're looking at 3 times 300 minus 300 squared over 200. At the lower limit, plugging in 0, again, nicely we get 0. Okay. Now, again, for these, you're not always going to get 0 for that other, uh, that lower value, so make sure you are careful and plug in when you, when you need to. Um, evaluating here looks like 900 minus 90,000 over 200. Again, we're going to want to simplify. So again, looking here, we get a 900 over 2 or 450. We're going to take that away from 900. Again, our producer surplus is a monetary value, so subtracting out, we get $450. Okay. Again, not all of your numbers are going to work out as nicely, so if you have to use a calculator to simplify, again, it's at this point you're going to want to plug in and rewrite it in terms of the value to the nearest cent. And again, not all of your equations are going to be this nice. In some cases, you may have to use U substitutions or integration by parts to solve your integrals, but the setup for all of these is the same. Start by getting your equilibrium. Once you have the equilibrium, set up your equation, whether it's producers or su consumer surplus. Make sure your variables are in the right form, meaning make sure your supply and demand are in terms of Q.
then plug in and evaluate.